into it. Amen. See, because a lot of people think, okay, if I go to church, I get blessed. If I go to church, this happens. But you can tell the person consistency and dedication to God when they come on time or they come and they're participating Amen. and not just existing in there. Amen. You see, because a lot of people, feel, we, a lot of us fail to realize as we get into the topic today that there are a lot of people in church who are dead. Right. And they're spiritually crippled. But, you know, the funny part about being crippled or in the spiritual, uh, the process of being spiritually crippled, right? Or spiritually handicapped or spiritually disabled or spiritually blind is a simple fact that no one knows about it because it's hard to tell. But if someone is mentally or physically disabled or suffering from different uh, blindness and so forth, it's easy to detect because the flesh allows us to see these things, right? Amen. The flesh allows us to see a blind person, right? Amen. The flesh allows us to see a person who's losing the mind and talking to themselves in the corner, right? Come up to us and say, well, we can, you can't this and you can't that, or God moves this way and God only moves that way. They, they place a demand on, they're not a demand, they place a false teaching on who God is and how God moves. Now, it causes you to lose your mind when you realize that somebody said, well, God don't move that way and God moves this way. Then you make you think that's, that's the devil. Right? Mm -hmm. Or the devil don't do this, the devil can't this, the devil can't kill you, the devil can't this, the devil can't that. But then you turn around and you sit there and you heart, you, you, you're about to die. Literally, you don't know what to say and you're going through all hell and you're about to literally die of fear. You're about to literally die of something and then you know this is the devil, but yet, they tell you no power. And the thing with the most dominant power is the thing that's going to attack the thing with the weakest power. Amen. Does that make sense? Amen. Amen. So, walking down the street, and we talk about this a lot in the car. Walking down the street, you see the dog, right? And the person walking the dog, what is the first thing they say? He don't bite. Right. But he has teeth. Right. He don't bite. How do we get his food into his system, his system if he don't bite? But he don't bite. Yeah, he might not bite while you're around because you can control him. But when you're not around him and I'm around him and he bit me, then how did I get bit if he don't bite? <laughs> how do I get infected if he can't do all these different things? Amen. Now, granted, I'm not saying that he has power and he has all these different things, but as we begin to understand, as we begin to understand the power of the word, we begin to understand why the devil fights us so hard on praying and studying. Amen. He fights, he attacks us so hard on praying and studying because the moment he knows how important, the moment a believer realizes how important this is in our lives, the more we begin to be able to speak almost un, for lack of words, we can be able to start speaking God's word unconsciously. You ever do something, next thing you know, you're like, ooh, I can't believe I said that. I didn't mean to say that. Yeah, you did, because it was deep there in there. It was just took something to pull it out. Somebody stepped on your shoe and you go, ooh. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, no, that was inside of you. That was the next word that all it took somebody to pull that out of you. So as we begin to build ourselves on our word or our most holy faith, the more we get into the word of God, the more we get into God's presence, the more God begins to reveal himself to us. And as God, and God, will not, and God can reveal himself at the same time he's revealing himself, he's revealing us to us, showing us how important we are to the kingdom and he's showing us how important that what's inside of us is that's causing the enemy to try to set us down. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, if I could pick a topic for today, this would be part one of the great deception. Amen. The great deception. As we touched a little bit in Bible class on the different types of uh, the fundamentals, I mean the different types of Christianity. Now, there's many, many types, but we're only touching on three or four of them today. Okay? You, got, um, you think you can pop that up real quick? Uh, oh, okay. From the Bible class, I'm gonna get her to pop that up real quick. Okay. But as we begin to understand, there are so many different things because now we're running into a thing called the new religious order. Now we are into this thing where it calls the church world has began has married the the church world has married the world's church. Did you get what I said? The church world has married the world's church. You see, and the, the Bible says, be not like them, but yet we found ourselves marrying them. 
And then we ask ourselves, how did the witch get into our house? Remember many a times I stood up here and I said, how did the witch get in my house, right? The witch got in my house, and you said, how did the witch get in my house and I'm a believer? How did the witch get in my house and, and I'm, I'm, far, uh, I'm, I'm tongue uh, speaking? Oh, yeah, I need that because I'm, I'm, I'm one of these I wanted to find. Uh, which one is it? I want the one that says preach the word. Okay, I want, okay, prophecy. Now, leave that right here, and then we're going to go to the church one, okay? Now, as we begin to look at this, the church world, because everything has a world to it, the church world has married the world's church. And yet we always saw and we looked and we realized and we recognized, but then we didn't pay attention. You know how it's a lot of stuff in our lives that we look at, but we don't pay attention to? You ever notice you look at it and say, you know what? That type of music shouldn't be in the church. This is what uh, Evertina Walker first said, right? Uh -huh. Then a couple other people said no. Then a lot of people just decided they want to say, okay, I'm with it, right? And what happened is, as we began to get into these things, these contemporary music and these different types of music, what happened was they decided to take out the, 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 the original sounds and with the beats and stuff that the Holy Spirit and God was giving that musician and decided they want to put the worldly music as a track. And when they put the worldly music as a track, is you begin to realize that in music, we you ever see uh, something where, like this, you know, on a, on a, on a hard line, go, doo, 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 like that, right? Mm -hmm. Or you go to a, uh, what do you call it, a diagnostic machine, a diagnostic machine does like that, right? Or you look at uh, something that it's just like a, uh, what do you call it, a, gra a, a graph, what is it, uh, you know, in the car, the graph, what is it called? The graph, yeah, I think it was equalizer, there you go. And you look at the equalizer, the equalizer, when the music player does like that, right? What makes it do, do that is the different vibrations and the different symbols and the different sound, sounds, because the sounds causing one beat, uh, like in the, the drum might make it do like this, the, the horns make it do like that, but you can see, but it's in different codes and colors and numbers, right? So what it's doing is it's activating and it's doing something in the spiritual realm. See, because we're so uh, uh, flesh conscious and so caught up in the flesh to the point we miss what's happening in the spiritual realm. And so we, 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 we allow the world to come in and push the church out, push God out of the church and push the, the church world out of the church and the world church came into the church and then the worldly preachers came into the place and the inspirational preachers and the motivational preachers and the secular preachers, the, the preachers who decide they want to preach faith, love, prosperity, uh, and all these different doctrines that has nothing to do with Christ crucified. It has nothing to do with the blood of Jesus. It has nothing to do with Jesus is the only way has nothing to do with the Word of God, but yet they have different scriptorial bases, but if you do this, you'll gain more financial money. But if they understood that, where is it? If they understood that prophesying, predicting or revealing the uh, thought, or as a, or a thought, well, this is what I want to speak for. Prophesying is divine inspiration, delivering a sermon. If they understood that prophesying is delivering a sermon, then they understand that Speaking prosperity and faith has nothing to do with what God is talking about in this time. See, because if I teach you how to get money and all this different thing, who are, who's teaching you how to get the devil out of your house? Who is teaching you how to get your family and relatives saved? Who is teaching you how that when all time break in, how to pray? You see, in all this thing, they're not teaching you how to pray, when to fast, when to listen to, you know, how to listen to God in the midst. Because if you're constantly working on how to get a financial breakthrough, then when is there a time to depend on God when you have my 15 steps on how to eliminate God and step into a worthy process? Yeah. You see, but a lot of people never think about it. They get so physically immune to what is happening in the flesh to the point that some people never sit back and realize that the preacher up there is not really preaching the word of God, he's preaching the word of financial or the word of flesh or the word of the world's capability. The church, it has edged out, the, the, they have taken out the choirs, they've taken out the, 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 the it, it is said, if you look at it, a lot of stuff has been taken out of the church, but people haven't really made, made, uh, paid attention to it. So now, they recognize that things we used to uh, do, we, the members of the church used to do in the church for free, they're having people come in and pay them to do it. They got people, they come in to pay to do their, uh, to do their praise and worship. 
people to come in to play their instruments, people to come in to preach their sermons, people to come in and do all these different things. And if you got someone that's doing your praise and worship and they're not a member of your church and then you're paying them to do it, then the question is, what spirit are they ushering in over your people? And if you're paying someone to play your instruments to bring the usher in, the, uh, usher in something to, to, to set the atmosphere, the thing is, what atmosphere are they setting? Because we know where they just came from because most preachers, when you talk to them, they know where the person just came from. Prosperity, faith, love. You get to see all these motivational speakers in the name of a church. But in the past, when you really sit down and begin to dissect their sermon, are they really talking about Jesus Christ crucified? Aren't you? Think about it. You know, when it's all said and done, they preached a nice sermon. Some people say a pretty sermon. But when it was all over, what did their sermon have to do with salvation? There's many preachers out there that say that Jesus isn't the only one. There's a lot of preachers that feel that the, uh, Jesus is a marketing tool. There are so many preachers out there with so many different theologies and thinking but they have a good following because they sound good or they have a mechanism. A mega church which draws people. And it's starting to seem like once you get to a certain level of people, your whole anointing shifts. And see, but that word shift, do you ever know that people use words in the in the church arena and people don't really realize those words really how deadly those words are? There's a shift in the spirit. Do you really know what that means? If there's a shift in the spirit or God is shifting you or there's a tidal wave, there's an earthquake, there's a fiery this in your life. Well, that means that there have to be some miracles. There have to be a terrible accident or a big construct. I can't pronounce that word. Construct. A big, a big uh, destruction. Thank you. Amen. That happen in your life. It has to be something big and major happen in your life. Because a shift means some type of movement has to take place. And if this movement takes place, and you're in this movement, are you prepared? to know how to move in this movement. In reality, there's not a shift, there's a movement. And when we realize that this movement, the question is, what type of movement is it? If there's a shift, what kind of shift is it? We're so good that God's doing a shift, God's doing a move, God's doing this, but what kind of move is it? What is this move that's taking place that I'm in the middle of? See, because when God, when these people prophesy God is doing a shift, God's doing a move, all of a sudden all hell breaks loose in your life. Now, do I gotta go through all hell for God to shift? Do I have to lose loved ones and, and go to funerals after funerals because God decided he wanted to make a shift? No. What happened was, and pay close attention to we would allow the church world to marry the world's church. We allow the church world to marry the world's church, causing that one world religion. You say, no, 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 I'm not talking about conspiracy talk. I'm talking about the simple fact that the church world, the world's church, came in, taught the church certain things, said, this is how what you do, and you can get more people. You can get more, but more bees with honey, right? Or you can get more with this, and you come in, you cause them to do this, but yet then, all of a sudden, our praise and worship and our, 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 our choirs and what used to do, we used to have the uniforms on, we used to do like this and we used to get up. All of a sudden they doing dances you see in the choir. You see in the in the in the in the in the in the, in the, in the clubs. Uh, they doing dances and all of a sudden the music that's back in them is music from a demonic era. But yet they fail to realize that with this music, every ounce of music has a demonic, if it's from the world, it has a demonic attachment to it, which causes keys and things to open up and then seduce you and bring you into it. So why am I listening to this? What it does is it causes me to come from here to here. So why do I listen to that? So as I begin to listen to 1390, I'm listening to this, and I'm like, why do I listen to this? I might as well go to the real 13. Yeah. So because as you begin to listen to it, you listen to every song that Kirk Franklin ever made, and his songs are made after every single, that's, he don't even change the words in some of his songs. He get that lazy at times. You know, I'm listening to I Smile, and I'm like, wonder why I don't like I Smile, and I realize why. He took it from a song from a secular art from some, for two rappers, from a rapper who said he'd be resurrected at, at a certain time. And I was like, and I was like, I don't know why I didn't get that. Because it's the same word, same everything, and then he got pink lipstick on. What did that have to do with being a believer? What are you trying to show our young men and our young women who are, in, who are believers? You telling them that wearing lipstick and tight pants are good for a man? Hmm. Awesome. Come on now. But yet, we don't understand when God is sounding alarm. We never pay a close attention. But when all 
all hell breaks loose in the church, we're ready to, do, to denounce and, and rebuke and destroy everyone instead of just going and saying, God, what do I do? Do I stand? Do I sing? Do I intercede? What do I do? And he only falls. What happened? People that need to see the thing that took place. See, things happen in the natural first to show you what's going on in the spiritual realm. He had to fall to open up the doors for this homosexual agenda. But we ignored that, but yet we would say something when President Obama say something about it. Oh, now it's a big thing, but it wasn't no big thing when he was doing it. We never opened our mouths. We just sit there because he's a man of God. You even put it, I put it on Facebook, I put a couple of people on there and say false prophet, right? right? And then I said, but yet I put a message under that. I put it up there. They had these different ministers, they say false prophet, right? right. Didn't say I agree with or didn't agree with, but you didn't read my message below. But then every sudden everybody wanted to argue with me. Then I said, okay, I understand what you're saying about that, that we need to pray for these people. But what do you say about the message I put there? They say, nobody say anything. See, what it is is the church focus more on what they can see and don't pay attention to what they can't see. They pay more attention to uh, uh, what they can see and don't read. See, God is talking. God is asking us questions. God is moving. But yet, we're not paying attention to what God is doing. So we've got, we're not paying attention to what God is doing. So who are we paying attention to? What's doing? We're paying too much attention to the devil. So we allow the work, the world church to come in to do and tell us what God is saying. And what that, when you say what God is saying, I'm talking about with the Lord Jesus. Did you get that? Was that going too fast? <laughs> if I'm going too fast, you're like, no. Man, man. We got to ask ourselves that we begin to go into these churches and we have these people that want to prophesy. You, I don't understand. I, I did a revival once. Actually, I didn't do it. Yeah, I did a revival. But yet, I was part of a revival first, then I did a revival. And in this revival, the revival that I was a part of first, there was a couple of ministers that chose to decide they want to prophesy instead of preach the word. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting right there and the guy asked me, are you married? You can't miss this. <laughs> I wanted to say no so bad, but I didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't know how my response would be. And I said, yes, then he said, are you happy, man? I want to say no so bad, but my apostle was sitting there and my wife was next to me. <laughs> so then he said, well, is that your wife? If I gotta help you to prophesy right. to me, <laughs> you need to get the witch out the church. Come on now. You see, people are allowing psychics and witches to come in and people to come in and say they prophesy in the name of some form of God, and they never realize that when God is speaking to you, if God's prophesying, if I give you a word, even though I see it in a futuristic sense, it is for God see it as now, I can see it as the future, you can see it as the future, but God see it as now. So the thing is, if I'm prophesying to you, I need to show you how to get that so you want to board it. Come on now. But yet what we do? God got something for you. Just wait on me. <laughs> if God's got something for me, and I got to wait on the Lord, then the question is, and I'm going through all hell and high water. I need a job. I need a bill paid. My wife is acting up. My kids are doing this. I need, I need, I need. But yet you're telling me to wait on the Lord, and you prophesying this. And I know I got to wait on the Lord, but I don't need you to come and prophesy and tell me to wait. Man. Now that's frustrating. I remember one time, I was deep in sin, and I was just a dead man. I know I was in sin. And I can say the name because the guy's not preaching. I went to Tom Hyde, and he said, he was over there, Julian. He said, God has you where you want you. Just stay where you at. <laughs> I said, <laughs> God has me where he wants me. Just stay where he wants me. So God wants me to stay in this sin until he moves me out of this sin. That's not right. That's right. See, because that's, that's that false bibliology that's been brought into the church that God will change me. God is not going to change me because I have that free will. No matter how much God speaks to me, it's up to me to do it. That's right. Yeah. You see, we wouldn't have sin if we had the choice to say no. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we had the choice to say, okay, God, you take total control. You do everything. Mm -hmm. Then we wouldn't have the sin. We wouldn't be on our knees all the time. We wouldn't be going through what we're going through. Mm -hmm. But yet, we have all these different religions merging. They got this thing, I think it's Calvinist, which means once say, always say. That's what we got that document from. Mm -hmm. Meaning that whatever you do, you cannot lose your salvation. So I can get saved today and go butcher somebody tomorrow and I'm still going to heaven. Mm -hmm. That don't make any sense. Mm -hmm. So we mean that I can do all the dirt in the world and still go to heaven. That don't make any sense. 
But yet, nobody would never address the issue on salvation in church anymore. What do they do? They talk about faith. They talk about money. How money will answer the question to everything. How money will move. How money became God instead of Jehovah. Yeah. Then everybody goes and they, 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 they get into the lines and the, pastor, and the guy comes and he says, okay, I hear in the house there's a hundred dollar line. There's this, there's that. You're not knowing that every time you touch his hand with that money and he says he hear and you giving that psychic money, you brought a curse on yourself. So you need to repent for it. Wow. But who was going to preach that in the pulpit? See, because now when the more people most of us get, the more we, we the most people water down their sermon, they water down what the anointing, what the Holy Spirit gives them to the point that the Holy Spirit's not giving them anything anymore, so they're making it up as they go. So now all of a sudden everybody's getting hurt. Everybody's getting crippled. Everybody's getting, but yet you don't see this because this is a spiritual thing. You're spiritually bound by lies and don't know how to get through. You're wondering, who's binding me? Who's binding me, Lord? And you didn't know that your pastor was binding you. Who's binding me? Who's binding you? You didn't know it was you that was binding you because you didn't get into the presence of God so God could tell you to pray for him to bring him out of this. Yes, Nobody ready to leave? Okay. Let's go to Re Revelation. Revelation 20 and 7. Whew. Amen. Everyone's good? Amen. Good, good, amen. I thank you so much for coming out and celebrating our first, second service with us. And I'm so glad that we can actually sit here and understand what God is saying in such a time right now. What God is calling us out of. He's calling us out of the world because too many churches are in the world. You look at some of these people on TV and you start doing the, you start listening to them and there are several preachers that actually say that Jesus is not the way. He's not the only way. When the Bible clearly states that Jesus said, I am the way, what? The truth and the what? The life. Did the Bible not say that? Did Jesus not say that? But you got many preachers that say that. You got preachers that won't even ask the, uh, in, the answer in regard to homosexual go to hell. You got a lot of Christians that they beat around, they won't answer the question, they won't go into it and say, well, I don't believe that they will because God. See, because they have gotten their understanding of who God is mixed up to who their God was. Everyone at Revelation 13? Let's just say 13. No, Revelation 20. I'm on 13. I'm sorry. Revelation 20 and 7. Okay, Revelation 20 and 7. It starts off saying that a thousand, let me say, and when a thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive what? The nations. He shall deceive what? The nations. Which are in the four quarters of the what? Earth. Of the earth. We're going to stop right there. Now let's go over to Revelation 12 and 9. You notice that you really hear preach preach on Revelation nowadays, right? Right. And then you spread. I mean, you notice that, if you ever go to some church, you ever notice how you can basically, if it is read that a preacher will come out of a book you don't know of, we only have one that comes in. Come on, I want you to go to Nehemiah. You be like, Nehemiah? He got the Catholic picture? He got the Andrade? I mean, where is Nehemiah? Or he goes to Obadiah. You're like, Obadiah? Because nowadays, it's like it's a tradition. Everyone only goes to certain texts, and they won't preach around certain texts. Because if you go to these certain texts, you have no other choice but to preach salvation. Christ crucified. You have no other choice but to preach Jesus. Amen? Amen. Where are we? 12 and 9. Revelation 12 and 9. Okay, 12 and 9 it says, and a great dragon, and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived what? The whole world. That dragon who that Satan which who? What did he do? Deceived the whole world. And was cast where? The earth. He was cast into the earth, right? Right. So before man reached earth, who was there? Satan. So if Satan was in the earth before man got to the earth, God, if you read in uh, Matthew, Luke, and Mark, it tells that the, that the uh, devil was the god of this world. <clears throat> now, I want you to do something before I finish my next book on my next week. I want you to pay close attention to the words that I use. The vocabulary that I use. Pay close attention to because the thing is, from this point on, if you never take anything with you after today, Pay close attention to the vocabulary that's being used in the pulpit. 
See, because when you pay close attention to the vocabulary that's being used in the pulpit, you realize if he's a new age preacher or is he a gospel preacher. Come on now. Oh. See, because when they start using the words like right, using words like like uh, and, and start using other type of words that have nothing to do, and, and they, instead of telling him Jehovah, calling him God, they just say God. Or they start saying certain things, and you're wondering, yeah, he preached a good sermon, but he bounced around the name of Jesus. So we have to pay close attention to the vocabulary, the wording, the certain things that go by. Because nowadays we have so many people who are connected to different sororities, fraternities, uh, reformations, and reformation they make their own uh, religious uh, religious beliefs. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. Masonics and Masons and people who are part of fraternities and sororities they bring in their demonic beliefs of who who a god is. Because when you get to a certain level it's called Luciferian, so they bring in the Luciferian doctrine into the churches, and when they bring the Luciferian doctrine into the churches, and you start going through it, wondering why you're having all these things occurring in your house, the question is, who are your past, who's your pastor connected to, or who's connected to, because it could be someone in the, in, the, in the pew that's bringing the spirit in. So pay close attention to the words that I use. Pay close attention to the words when you hear somebody preaching to you. Pay close attention. When somebody's having a conversation with you, saying that I need prayer, pay close attention to the words they say. Because just because I need prayer don't mean you have to pray for me. Mm. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Did I lose somebody? Mm -hmm. Just because I ask for prayer don't mean you have to pray for me. Mm -hmm. By you coming in agreement for praying with me, how do you know I'm not praying on you? Mm -hmm. wow. P-R-E-Y. And at a point of contact, because so, so strange reason people feel that they're just because they read scripture out of context, they believe that just because we gotta pray, I gotta hold my I gotta hold your hand or touch you and close my eyes. Mm -hmm. Not knowing that in the process, transference of spirits are taking place. Transference of spirits is like a spiritual bloodline of spiritual blood transfusion taking place. Mm -hmm. So now you're starting to reproduce some things in your life and you're wondering why, and you say all I want to do is pray for people. Okay. If I get too deep, say. <laughs> All right. Where am I? Revelations 9 and I did 13. Uh, let's go to 9, uh, 12, 13. Did I do 13, 12, 13? 12, 9. Unless 12, 9. 12, 9. Okay. And let me see if I want it. Now let's go over to Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14. You see, because a lot of us never realize that we need to repent for being a part of certain... I, you know what? I'll put it this way. When God began to deal with me in different areas, I don't know what I did with my hands too. But when God started dealing with me in certain areas, what I did was I had to denounce, repent for being a part of different organizations and being a part of different people. Because what happened was I did not know that that spirit that was on the people was trying to crep into my ministry and crep into my lifestyle causing me to wonder why I'm going through what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. You see, because what's happening is, people fail to realize, I'm going to give you this side one right here real quick. Can I, can I give you a side one? That's what, you don't have to pay for this. None of this is free. You know, people always say, oh, you got to pay for that. But what's happening is, what's taking place right now is that demonic spirits, when people begin to project themselves and they can maybe come inside of your dream, that's, that's, that's a form of witchcraft, but yet people don't teach you that. You need to always guard yourself full armor whenever you go into any place. Mm -hmm. Because you think you go, you be, you be sleeping and you're wondering why you're dreaming about this person, why these different things are happening in your dreams, and what's happening is that person found their way inside of your, your spirit. Mm -hmm. But whenever we're taught, we need to guard ourselves from the witches that hang out in the, in the, in the churches. Mm -hmm. Maybe some more. Okay. Now let's go to let's go to Isaiah 14 and 12. Isaiah 14 and 12. It says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did thou weaken what? The nation. Isaiah 14 and 12. Isaiah 14 and 12. Yeah. Okay. So it says, "How art thou fallen from, how fallen from heaven? Who? Oh, the son of the morning. Son of the morning, right? Right. How thou cut down? How thou cut down and fallen and ground and this weekend what? The nation, right? Right. It said that Satan, when he came into the earth, he weakened the nation, right? 
For thou hast said in thy what heart, I will ascend into I will ascend into heaven, and I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the side of the north. Well, it goes on and on, but we look how Satan wanted to be who? God. He thought he was better than God. So when he came to the earth, as time went by, he created his own church. And when he created his own church, he slowly crept into what we call the church of God. Now pay close attention now. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna give you a little, little quick story, history or whatever you want to call it. A church and a temple are two different things. Okay? A church, anybody can come in. Dress any kind of way you want. Do whatever you want to do. There's a church. They call it the community center sometimes. People call it everything because they want everybody to come into their place. A temple is different. A temple is actually, you have to be invited in there. There's a certain dress code. You can't come any kind of way. You can't act any kind of way. You can't just do what you want to do. You have to be, you first you be invited or you have to be a convert. You, you gotta be some way that you're initiated in there, but when you come in there, you're initiated in there, you become part of that. Paul always stated that our body is the temple of what? Where we go. One scripture says the temple of who? God, right? But we found somehow we decided to tell God that I don't want my body to be a temple anymore, I want it to be a church. So we decided we would let any and everybody come into our body, allowing Satan to take ownership of our body. So we're wondering why we're getting plagued with sickness and disease. We need to take our body back and give our body back to God. If my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, then I should be able to commune with the Holy Ghost to the point that whatever tries to attack my body or anybody connected to me, we can speak to the body speak into the temple and the temple has to begin to it can purge itself. We can speak to the temple and the temple can be able to heal itself. We can speak to the temple and the temple will show us how to get clean, how it how we can clean our temple, how what to do. Can I tell you what today's topic was again? Today's topic is called the Great Deception. The Great Deception. My subtitle, my theme, is called four D's. You know like three D's? 40. That means the dangerous deception, the dangerous deceptive doctrines of devils. Mm. Mm. The dangerous deception doctrines of devils. Now pay close attention. Let me try to be over here real quick. We're familiar with 3D, right? You go to the movies, you watch it, you watch right. Avatar, you watch all these different movies. Because what it does is it does things, it's illusion, it does things to make you think you're seeing something that's really close up in reality. Up. But what's actually what he's doing is an illusion that's playing tricks on your mind. Now 4D is much deeper. The more dead you can feel like you're touching, it looks like he's actually dead. <laughs> They're doing concerts now, bringing dead artists back so that they can come and do concerts. <laughs> now they've been working on other Presley too. They did too, Now they're doing some other people. But then now, look at this. I told you about the church bro and the world's church, right? There's pastors, I, I, so far I only read about one, but there's pastors that are doing, instead of uh, having like, you know how they, they, instead of them giving the second church to someone else, they decide they want to decide to have a, you go into an annex and you watch the service. Well, what they do is, instead of doing either or, what they do is, what they do is they do a hologram picture it, so you're looking at the pastor in a hologram version to deliver a sermon. Mm. Is there something demonic about that? Yeah, yeah. Or is that just me? <laughs> How do I look going to hear somebody tell me about God and preach a sermon and they're nothing but a spirit? A spirit of a man. They're nothing but a, a figment or illusion or thing. Because what happens is you, you're looking through the some, some are to, so, so Some are to the point you have, have the glasses and some are to the point you don't need the glasses. That's the 4D. 4D, you don't need glasses. And see what this thing, with this thing, with the, the hologram, what it is, is, is the illusion of if it was really there and reality is not. You can look like this and you, you can touch and almost feel that it's there, but, you, but you're only allowed to get so far until you realize that it's not, it's just an illusion. I think it's either Japan or China, they have a show 
this gear to it looking like a Loch Ness monster, but you only can see it for such a distance. And it looked like a monster coming out of the sea and it's splashing in the water and doing everything. And they, and, 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 and this is hologram. See, we have stepped into an era of time where we don't even question what goes on in the pool because we just let it go on. We let people just tell us anything and believe that it's God because you drive down the street, what do you see? Bibles in the back of the windows, all faded. People never pay close attention to the wording and the, the, the vernacular and the stuff that comes from out the pulpit. It's just a simple fact that as long as you get hoot and holler and you get to get excited, mm -hmm. then you'll preach the profound message that will have proliferated people and uplift them and motivate them. Word. But in all in all, when you use your big words, mm -hmm. what is your life like when you leave the pulpit? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is your life like, you know, after all these big words, what happened to the salvational call? Are you afraid to do salvation or call because when you do the salvation or call, it's going to cause the living company, cause the enemy to come in and expose you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The dangerous deceptions, the dangerous deceptive doctrines of devils. Decept, deceive means to give false impression leading astray. Deceptive, act of deceiving tricks, mentality, and physical illusion. Conning line. See, because what happened is nowadays, the enemy, we are, we're, we're more flesh minded, we're more focused on what we can see, and we don't pay close attention to what we don't see. Right. You see, I can show you this handkerchief, and I slip and fall, and everything that I ever said from that point before that and that fall, most people will remember the fall, but they won't remember what I just said. Mm -hmm. So it will cause them to say, No, I don't want salvation because he fall. Mm -hmm. Now he fell, he fall. Mm -hmm. You see, pick me up. Ask God what, do you, what he wants, what, what, what to say. Maybe God might say, say nothing, let him, let him stay there. Maybe God might say, pick him up. Maybe God said, just go fast for him. Maybe, what, what God will tell you what to do for that man in the midst, or that woman in the midst of that sin. See, because the more I focus on that man's sin, the more I focus on his faults, the more I keep regurgitating and regurgitating and participating and participating, I brought myself under curse. People never realize they never tell us in church that every time we gossip, we're cursing ourselves. Right. We're bringing ourselves under condemnation. We're, 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 we're binding ourselves, wondering, did somebody put a curse on me? No, your gossip binds you so God can't move. How can God move when you're constantly gossiping and the Holy Spirit, how can the Holy Spirit move and sing? But also, check this out. Most people lose their minds that are in church because they're taught what God can and can't do, what the devil can and can't do, to the point that when God do what they say he can't do, people lose their mind. Think about it. If somebody tells you that God can't do something, and then God do what they say he can't do, then the question is, who just did that? If the devil can't do this and the devil can't do that, then who just did that? So now I don't know who just did it. So now I'm blaming God for something the devil did. I'm blaming the devil for something God did. But most of the time, everybody blames God for everything. Right. Good or bad. Right. Or they go, well, I guess it's his will. God's will is his desire. If you say, I guess it's God's will, that means that you haven't been in the world. That means you're not connected to God. That means you don't even know who God is. Mm -hmm. So the question is, if it's God's will and you're a preacher saying it's God's will, then you need to really get into your word because you need to know that in intercessory, and in prayer, and in worship, and in studying of the Word, the Holy Spirit tells you God's will. Mm -hmm. You see, because if my body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, right? I'm what? Body, soul, and spirit, right? So the Holy Spirit is talking to my spirit. The Holy Spirit's not talking to my flesh. I want to, you know, I, I don't even, I, I, I dare not even try to philosophize that one because I wouldn't even know how that would work if the Holy Spirit actually spoke to our flesh. Mm -hmm. I mean, if the Holy Spirit spoke to our flesh, I, maybe we might have less sin issues. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe we might have more. Yeah. Because, you know, you think about how many people go, well, you know, Lord, <laughs> I repent for it afterwards. <laughs> you know? How many people you heard say that? Or only God knows my heart, so they're going to go and do it. We're mocking God. We're making a fool. We're trying to make a, 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 a fool as if God doesn't exist. You see, we're living in a world where we're controlled by, like I said, we're controlled by what? Our senses, right? Mm -hmm. 
So we're not getting fed meat at church, we're getting fed milk and pasteurized food and stuff like that. And so when we go through all hell and high water, we don't know how to get before God's presence. We don't. And then when we get into God's presence, anything past three minutes is too long, but we'll spend all day in the TV. Hmm. Think about it. Any other way, hey, you know, when I stayed by myself, I found myself, I spent, all, and I'm, I'm in the ministry now, right? I'm not going to say I did some really hard work, no. I would sit there, get off of work, go get something to eat, and sit there and watch TV all day, and then tell God I didn't have enough time to get into prayer. I kid you not. But the sad part about that is I had a horrible night that night. You see, because when I got called into the ministry, and I'm sure a lot of ministers probably, I hope I'm not the only one. When I got called into the ministry, before I got called into the ministry, my understanding of God, I didn't even question it, didn't really, I cared, but I didn't care. Mm -hmm. But when I got called into the ministry and I found myself being under different uh, teachings and stuff like that and being in a relationship with people and, 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 and going to church, and I found myself questioning, who is God? Then I wound up questioning my beliefs and my faith in God. I didn't do this until I got that call into the ministry. I'm like, God, did you really call me? Why me? You know, I'm not the brightest person in the world. Why did you call me? Why did you call this person? Why did you this? Why did you that? I'm asking God all these questions because I'm wondering why he called me. And I'm seeing things, I'm going through stuff that people say God don't do. So I'm wondering did I somehow, somewhere, get caught up into some form of witchcraft, knowing and unknown. You see? I'm wondering what's really going on in my life because now I'm questioning God, what's going on? So I'm not questioning God and I'm having these attacks in my sleep and I'm having these attacks and these attacks that I'm going through is, is, is so weird to the point that I hear God saying get up and pray, but I'm saying no. No, 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 I gotta get a little early in the morning, I don't wanna be tired. You know the excuse we make when God tells us to get up yeah. and pray. That soft real voice is right. And all of a sudden you can't sleep. And so you try to do everything to go back to sleep, talk and turn, and find that favorite position. Because you got that favorite position, that favorite position knock you out. Then it did it again. No. And all of a sudden I got attacked by something. I got attacked by him. It was like war. It looked like something in goodies and saggy. It, it, it looked weird. It wasn't like something, you know, it wasn't, they, they had on, you know, good, it looked like something like monks or something. It, it, you know, to me, in my in my, in my insight of what I thought it was, it looked like somebody had on a hoodie with their hood on like this and saggy pants and, you know, uh, lugs or something like that. You know, because God's not going to allow us to see something that cause us to, okay, I'm sorry. I don't know, he might, he might not. That has that stuff. <laughs> well, anyway, so I get, I, I get attacked and I'm hearing them talk, but they don't have a mouth. Okay. So I'm hearing them talk about how they're going to kill me and how they're going to do this and how they're going to do that. And I'm, I'm, I'm in these different areas. So then now, before this, as, this, this actually happened, I, I, I was like, God, I quit. I'm not doing it. I can't do it. I mean, I mean I'm, I'm, I'm going through too much. I can't take it. I mean, you're not saying anything. You're not moving. You're not doing anything. I don't want to. No, I, you know what? I'll just go to church. How do we do that? How did I mean? How, how, how did I look telling? How, I mean, why did I do that? Yet, God kept talking to me. You don't hear me. But they said God's not going to talk to anybody to do these things, but God was still talking to me, saying, Get up and pray. Because, see, God knew I was being seduced by that ministry that I was involved in. <laughs> God knew I was being seduced by the ministry that I was in. So he kept telling me to get up and pray. But see, the demonic spirit that was over that ministry was constantly attacking me. But yet I said, no, God, I quit. So then these demonic spirits come and they attack me. And then I wake up and go, why me? Long story short, I ran back to God like real quick. Like somebody running from the police. Repenting and asking God, you know, and then he started showing me some things after that. But we, we get so caught up that people lose their mind because people are preaching what God can't and won't and this and that and the devil can't and won't and this and this. And, 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 and we're wondering if, God, if the devil can't do this, then why are people sin? 
If he can't attack your body, if he can't kill you, then why do I get, why don't people have diabetes? If he can't kill you, why is this? I got one for you. How many of you ever heard people say, well, if uh, God can't get, if, 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 there's, if God loves you so much, why don't baby die, right? Mm -hmm. Question is this: If God, if you love God so much, why aren't you interceding so that the, the babies won't die? Mm -hmm. You see, the reason babies are dying because no one's interceding because the devil knows destiny, so he causes destiny to die at his infant stages. You see, we don't know how to, we wouldn't, we don't know how and what to address and talk how to answer these questions that these so-called philosophizing people ask us. So what do we do? We say, don't answer it. No. Go into, when you begin to connect to God and God begins to speak to you, the Holy Spirit begins to move to you, He tells you how to answer that question. Because God will not allow you to leave that question open. So because if God loved that child so much, why? No, God didn't allow it to happen. What happened was you fell asleep, you wouldn't pray, and by you not praying, that baby died. So the question is, why aren't you praying? Why aren't you on your knees interceding for these children, but yet the moment the hot weather hit, all of a sudden all hell break loose and chaos and all these different things happen in the neighborhood? We have been deceived by the great deception of, death, of the dangerous doctrines of devils. See, because with the 4D, 3D thing, is the hologramic thing. It plays tricks on your, eye, on your eyesight, on your vision, causing you to see things that are not there. But in reality, it might be there, but it's there in a spiritual realm, causing you to see in two realms. Does mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that two D? She said she saw a ghost. She, I don't know who she is, I just said she, okay? I don't want to lose y'all until y'all be looking around. Who is she? Who is she? See, that's the thing. All I have to do is say she, and then I lost some people. Okay? So I got to let you know that she is nobody. Okay? It said it saw a ghost, okay? Did it see a ghost or not? It probably did. Because the thing is, when you wake up, in the middle of the night, you're coming in between these different things that people can, it's, it's hard to teach on certain topics because they're so borderline witchcraft to the point if you really tell people about it, they might go and tap into the witchcraft part of it. So it's hard to tell people to stop doing this and stop t doing that and stop touching yourself. See, because we never realize, the people never realize that when you do certain things, certain, sin is a sin because of the simple fact that sin, these things are key openers, gate keys and portals that cause the demonic things to come in and will cause you to see it in the natural. You know? You would come out your body and wonder why you're coming out your body because sometimes it can be one of two things. It can be God doing something. Yeah, it can be God doing something or it can be something satanic. But, but the question is, it has to be taught by the Holy Spirit in that area because if I tell you, then you can probably you might try to go uh, and, and, and tap into that area, get into witchcraft, and get caught. What does that mean by get caught? Let me explain that to you. How many of you got Facebook? Yeah. Get on with you. <laughs> Everybody raise your hand to pretend you got it, alright? Okay. <laughs> on Facebook, you got the greatest prolific writers on there. Everybody's an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, reverend, doctor, deacon. Everybody's something. And everybody's rich. Everybody's been around the world. Everyone got money. And the idiots that sell drugs decide they want to show all their money on them. And then you got some people that just want to just be naked on them. And what they're doing is they're opening up people to porno. And you're wondering why things are happening because that curiosity, that porno, caught you. Okay. So anyway, with these big preachers, doctors, thinking doctors, all these, everybody wants to be a prolific writer, everybody wants to be a psychic and all this stuff. What happened is you got the psychic saying they're prophets and they begin to tell you about astral physics and astral this and astral that and tell you about, oh, you got to be careful because people will come out of their bodies and visit you in your sleep and stuff like that. Well, then they tell you how to do it, how it will happen. And the question is, you weren't supposed to tell anybody how it happened. You just tell them to be careful because it happened. Don't tell me how it happened because if you come into a, a believer's house and the believer is strong in the word of God, that believer blinds that person, that now that person in a coma trapped in some place. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So now they caused, they sparked somebody's curiosity. It could be a kid, could be a pervert, could be anybody. Now they say, okay, you know what? I can just come out my body and I don't have to go to jail. All I can do is do it in a dream. You see, that's a thing called too much information. And too much information is the thing that causes people to get caught up into witchcraft. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, everybody see that? So, 
I have one important part I'm going to do before I leave. I mean, before we go, but I want to read this. Is that okay? Okay. It says right here in my notes. It says, uh, "Where am I?" Okay. Oh, I read that already. Oh, I did it already. <laughs> so, in my closing, I guess. I want to thank everyone for coming out today. And I hope that you was able to get some things and I hope you understand the importance of keeping yourself covered, protected when you're going to different churches. When someone asks for an offer, what I want you to start doing is ask God what it is that you want what he wants you to give. Because God might tell you it's great enough to tell him that you want to uh, show some time. God might tell you, uh, maybe he wants you to do this, he wants you to do that. Ask God what it is, because when you're sowing, it opens up the doors to certain things. But we're taught, when somebody said give, we're taught to like, okay, let me get money. How do you know that that's what God wants you to give? See what I'm saying? You know, you got people saying, well, if you got, you got your, they got soothsayers and witches that's in the church, they got Simon's that's in the church. Simon's job was, he went around, Preaching the word. The question is, what word was he preaching? Mm -hmm. Seducing everybody. They thought he was such a mighty man of God. And by them thinking that he was such this prolific writer and this prolific man of God, they would fall prey unto him. Then people say, it's offering time, so what do we do? We might even get a good sermon in regards to offering and everybody drop their offering in there. But what did God tell you? Did God really tell you to give? Because the moment you do this, you're releasing something from your spirit into the next spirit. So now it's almost like, imagine this. Although I'm dropping in there like that. And now you're wondering, what's wrong with my finances? We gotta always ask God before we do a lot of different things. Okay, how do you do that? Okay, in my morning worship, do everything in, in morning worship. God, what it is, what, what is my son doing? That's it. Whatever else you're going to pray about. Yeah, you ain't got to go, go, God, uh, who you want me to sow into? God, who you want me to sow into? No. Cover myself, under the blood, put it full armor. What do you want for me to do today? And somewhere in that process, and as you go into your morning worship, God will tell you what to do. That's not deep, is it? Because my thing is, if God told me to tell, say, oh, I think there's five people here that got a hundred dollars, why didn't he tell the five people? Why did they just feel convicted that they got to do it? You know, that was one of the things that caused me to lose my faith because I look in my bank book and all I see is the church name in there, and I'm struggling. But yet you tell me every time I get to your ministry, God's going to move abundantly in my life and relationship, but all hell's breaking loose in my life and relationship. So we gotta know how to go for the Father. We gotta know how to get into God's presence. As we get into God's presence, God will begin to show us. God will begin to speak to us. God will begin to move. See, because God is never gonna do anything. You feel like me? God is not gonna do anything. Now, for you to repeat that, let me explain to you. Okay? I'm glad you said move. I don't know. That's how witchy. Okay. Are we not free will, right? God God's the Alpha and Omega, right? Yes. He's the beginning and the what? Yes. When we read Revelation, what does it tell us? Yes. Revelation tells us about the end time. Yes. Right? When people prophesy to us, they tell us about what? Future things, right? Yes. What God is going to do, right? Yes. Okay. If prophecy deals with God telling us what he's about to do, and, pro and the revelation speaks about what God has done, all this time it took in place. We read in the, we, we read in Matthew 28, uh, 20, Matthew 24, 22, how uh, time has shortened, meaning that everything has sped up. Notice how time is going by fast now, right? right. Seems like yesterday was just January. Now what are we in? We in what, May? No, actually, we almost in March. We in, almost in June in a couple more what, weeks. You notice that a lot of times you go to bed, you wake up, you're like, in the middle of the night, it's almost time to go to work. You're like, whoa. You know? And you feel like you lost some, you feel like time, like, you ever travel somewhere, you're like, damn. 
Bible already speaks about things that already took place. So God already allowed all these things to take place.